Hi everybody, this is Chris. And this is Matt. And this is Mule. Mule. What does Mule stand for? Multi-purpose utility. I have no idea. Oh, we've Lugging equipment. Up. I know. We're three seconds in. <laughs> God damn I it. Looked it up. I looked it up. I really did. I looked it up, but I forgot. I looked it up after you asked me last, you know, a few weeks ago, and I have also forgotten. Uh I was it actually going to say possible to keep it in your brain. No, because it, it's a mule. It's a cybernetic mule that you haul stuff to on an alien planet full of robots and spheroids and stuff like that. Yes. And so this is mule. The show is not a review. No, 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 no. no. We've played this game. Well, this is our short game because we do two games a month. One, we play for the entire month. We just spend days playing it over and over again. That game right now is XCOM. This yes. was our short game for the last four weeks, which we played a few days of. And I would say with Mule, that's enough. Yeah. You know. Um, and now we're going to talk about it. You may agree, disagree, comment below, Discord, Patreon, Reddit, wherever makes you happy. Or just yeah. shout it into the air. Somehow right. I'll know you're mad at me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. You'll just be like, I feel I feel bad all of a sudden. I like, Someone oh, hurt my some, feelings. Someone's watching the YouTube channel. That's why. Yeah. If you want to hurt my feelings, just shout. I'll get it. It'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but seriously, uh, 1983, one of the first five games from Electronic Arts. And yeah. originally came out on Atari. Here's a fun fact about Mule. Mule actually stands for multiple use labor element. Oh. If only you'd remembered that before, but now. It's it's uh yeah. yeah. I had to scroll back through the manual, which I conveniently still had open. Let's talk about the manual. You know, normally we jump into the history of the game and stuff, but since you mentioned the manual, sure. what are your feelings on the manual? Um Overall, it's a really, I think it's a really good manual because it has, it's full of tips. It has a frequently asked questions and there's a section at the back that I love where it's the developers telling you their strategy for Mule and like how they play. And it kind of gets into a little bit of the dynamic between the developers when they play. Mm -hmm. I think that's fantastic, but it does leave out a few things and it's, it's not very concise. Um, like the... The first time I became frustrated with the manual, I was I was at the store and I was like, oh, shit, I forgot. Like, it was like the first time I played. I forgot what the icons are for, like, mm -hmm. the there's different resources you can build. Yeah. And I was like, which one is food? And I was like, oh, it's going to be in the manual. It's on the back page of the manual, which in real life would be great because you just flip it over and there it would be. But in the right. age of the Internet, when you're when you're dealing with a PDF, that's a, a bunch of scrolling to get to something that should be like central, you know? Right. And like when I, obviously when I played this years and years ago, I didn't even have a manual. So I, you figure it out eventually, but mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, there's not a lot of moving parts to it. My complaint was mostly with this screen. And I think yes. concise is the thing it's very apparent no one edited this because there's sort of no organization to the manual. The information mm -hmm. is mostly in there uh, and it feels good to read, but it doesn't do a manual's job of getting the information to you concisely. Yeah. Yeah. This is a very process given driven game because you're going to do one thing, then another thing, and then things change. And like, it, it, it should be like a board game manual more than it kind of meanders. It's, it's, it's a little hard to like, take it all in and understand it. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> what? what? Now, <laughs> take exactly what we just said and replace manual with the lost sectors. And it's the same description. <laughs> <laughs> it desperately needs editing <laughs> meanders all over the place is hard to take in <laughs> 10 out of 10 yeah 10 out of 10 thanks for watching 
Oh, all right. Uh, sorry, I just had that thought. I'm like, man, we are the biggest fucking hypocrites. <laughs> yeah. Right. Gives you very useful. little useful information. No useful Actually, information. It's chock full of useful information. You just have to noodle around to find yeah, it. Yeah, you got to dig. It's not gonna. It's not gonna be like bullet pointed for you. Yeah. Oh my God. There's. There's my wake up call of the day. All right. Anyway. Yep. So that's our view on the manual. My issue is specifically with this screen. Mm -hmm. Where they should talk about what the characters are and do. They're like, you can pick multiple characters and you don't hear about them again until tips at the end when they talk about two of them being balanced for money. Mm -hmm. Specifically the humans and the bird creatures. Mm -hmm. But they don't talk about any of the others and it's kind of suggested that the others might have different things but i don't know i don't know like do they all have different powers do they all do different things it'd be cool if they did but... some of them are labeled like beginner some of them are labeled advanced or something but i can't so... figure out why right like the little i usually play the the testicle or the uh, Mr. Happy. Okay. Which are the top right and the middle right. That There's guy, Mr. the hacker. Yep. yep. Do you remember those little Mr. Sure. Little Mrs. books? Little yes, Mr. I, do. I love, I collected those. That was like Did the you? first thing I ever collected. I loved those books. I was more of a Richard Scary guy. Mm, sure. Sure. It's more of a Richard Scary guy. Yeah. So <laughs> I got to say, anyway, before we get into our childhood childhood book <laughs> yeah what did you read as a kid audience go comment <laughs> on whatever mm -hmm. uh i read john belair's when i got to be a young adult okay. and that's what got me into like edward gory because edward gory did all the illustrations and i loved it yep anyway let me say real quick that i just now got the the little guy in the helmet with the the antenna i thought that was an alien this whole time i was all excited because i know you like it when there's no humanoid in the game mm -hmm. but it is a humanoid yeah it tells you in the manual it's a humanoid yeah but i thought because it looked like it looked i alien. thought those were like eye socks yeah no but no it's antennas for his helmet sorry anyway anyway i do think it interesting that the human is the one that's penalized yeah as opposed to human is the easiest choice. Right. Right. That breaks the, the video game trope. And then rather than going across the spectrum to the robots as being the easiest choice, they went with bird things. Sure. Right. Just do it. Hey, hey, Chris, hmm. you want to know something real clever? What? The planet you're on. What? The planet? Earth. Errata. Oh, Errata? Read it backwards. Read it backwards. Uh, ta oh my God, it's Atari. I figured that out. <laughs> you worried it, did you? I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Thanks. Alucard is Dracula spelled backwards. No. Dr. Acula. Um. <laughs> <laughs> this, this conversation makes perfect sense to us. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully people watching are with us on it. I just don't know anymore. Well, that's sort of, the, I mean, at this point, that's the fun of our show is we yeah. go off the rails. We do weird things. It's just us talking. Um, usually about the game, sometimes about other things, sometimes about other games. Yeah. All right. So let's try our damnedest to get this back on track. Let's, let's get into it. Atari, yep. Commodore. IBM PC eventually, MSX2, NES, the PC8801, Mark II, the Sharp X1. All these Very things portable. had versions. Uh, Nintendo had a version? Yeah, Nintendo had a version. And that was actually one of the reasons the developer broke away from EA is... I mean, if, if you know your video game history, 1983 was the great video game crash or Atari fatigue or whatever you want to call it where mm -hmm. cartridges basically collapsed. And one of the reasons was, was computer games were picking up speed um, along many other reasons. That's not even an oversimplification. It's not even the main reason. Um, 
And she felt that, you know, Nintendo had and cartridges still had a community video game aspect to them that was worth pursuing. And Electronic Arts was like, no. <laughs> right. Which is a sad story. There's a great quote from Daniel Buntenberry that I put in the notes. When I was a kid, the only times my family spent together that weren't totally dysfunctional were when we were playing games. Consequently, I believe games are a wonderful way to socialize. Yes. And that really highlights what this game and, and most of our other games are really mm -hmm. about. They're like all multiplayer, kind of this board gamey, strategy gamey kind of yeah. thing. I had like she also said um no one ever was on their deathbed saying they wish they spent more time alone in front of their computer. And in my head I went the first thought I thought is I will. And the second thought <laughs> is yep. well that's because they're alone. No one hears them say it. So, <laughs> <laughs> right, they're enjoying their quiet time. They're enjoying their quiet time. They didn't Are you want getting the wumpus? There. Yep, I'm gonna get this wumpus, baby. Maybe not this. I don't think I get it the first pass, but you will see the wumpus. Yes. Anyway, so, we'll talk about the wumpus. We'll talk about the wumpus. I got a lot to say about um, that wumpus. But she was a hard proponent of multiplayer games and really pushed towards them. And most of her games tried to do this family game aspect. And there's the thing I want to say about this. This game needs a board game. I know her kids are sort of carrying on the Mule franchise and keeping it going when they can. Mm -hmm. I I want a Mule board game. I want to sit down at my table and play an Agricola-style Mule game. Totally. It would be kids. a good time. It would. It's, like, perfect for it. This is, yeah. And... Yeah. If you like that kind of board game, this is it in 1983 in computer games. So you can play alone or with up to four people, which I know the Atari computers, most of them had the four joystick ports, which is why you could do four. But they even managed to get it on the Commodore and other things. You can play up to four people. So that's mm -hmm. really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And this is ultimately... Uh, uh, an economics land management game. Mm -hmm. And I really like that. Like it's, it's complicated. It's surprisingly rich for 1983. Like there, there's a lot of different elements and you can take, you can use a lot of different strategies, but the rules are very simple. And I think that's why it's super successful. Um, but again, it, this is like the second short game I found myself saying this. You have to play this with a person. Mm -hmm. It's just not as much fun with the computer at all. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, oh, man, I lost it. Um, another one of those too many thoughts. So I did play this. Now, this recording isn't this, but I played this with my wife who had never seen this before. And... This screen here, or not not specifically this part, but the trading part, ticked her off a lot. And I got a lot of gripes. Because that what? timer is uncancelable. Yeah. The generally speaking, and and honestly, pr probably the main reason it's less fun to play it alone the pacing can be quite agonizing and and ordinarily i think you would that would be if you had four people you'd be wheeling and dealing and maybe finding yourself pausing it which you can do with spacebar anytime like mm -hmm. it's built into the game yeah because you're supposed to be colluding with each other you're supposed to be wheeling and dealing and deciding who you're going to screw and and right. all that stuff um, and you don't get that. And when you're playing with the computer, you find yourself just waiting for that timer to tick down, and it's really mm -hmm. annoying. Um, yeah, you find that with two people, too, though. And yeah. I'm betting you'd find it even more. Because the computers do a certain amount of slowness with their movements and stuff. But playing with people, those timers... Everybody gets a timer. Everybody's, you know, 
it's going to slow the game down even more. And I, I think you'll really start to feel it if you go past two people. I mean, yeah. other people will have to speak for it. And this is why one of the things where I think the game's more interesting in standard mode where there's land purchases and, and other elements to the game that don't exist in beginner mode. Mm -hmm. But it is the difference between six turns and 12. And 12 to me is too many turns for this game. Right. There's two modes. There's beginner mode and standard mode. And if you play standard mode, the economy is richer. Yes. By quite a bit. And and the experience, I think, is overall better. But it goes on for 12 turns. And a, a lot can change in those 12 turns. And it kind of feels a little more diffuse than you want it to. Like, you want to feel like you're manipulating the economy and you're like, you know... Mm -hmm. Uh, um, having a huge impact, but like it, over twelve turns, so much changes, and it just it feels a, a little more slapdash. And that's quite a long time to play Mule, especially when you're waiting for that timer to tick down right. so many times. Mm -hmm. So I wish you could play standard mode with six turns, right? Or let you pick how many turns you want to play. Like I want to play six, nine, or twelve, and have mm -hmm. that be a slider on the game starting screen mm -hmm. would have been perfect um, and there's also a tournament mode which we didn't talk about didn't talk where there's a whole nother resource type it. yeah there's literal collusion where you can mess with people mm -hmm. along with um a new resource together crystal something i yeah, forgot what it's called. or something yeah so that's kind of cool and that's that's the thing I was trying to remember to say earlier when you were talking about the economy and it, it feels very rich and it feels very deep, but still approachable because no system is deep. It relies mm -hmm. on multiple systems bumping into each other to create right. depth. And right. that is really like here, we're just, no one has anything to buy. We're just all sitting there. Yeah, watching yeah, that's agonizing. Um, but like the the you know the colony needs energy. Do I not buy some smith ore this time and try to do some energy grabs or do how do I? What am I doing long term, short term to try and win this game? While at the same time you're talking about colluding to screw people. And that's important, but you can't screw people too hard. Mm -hmm. Because if the colony, if the overall colony doesn't pass a threshold, everyone loses. Right. That's fascinating. It's a very, very interesting game, and it, it there's a lot of dynamics involved. We we should probably just talk about how it operates because yeah, you want to start if you that? haven't played this, yeah. So you start you choose your race and your color and and the color thing is another very oddly paced because it just like cycles through them mm -hmm. and it's very slow it's very slow and i don't get why that was the choice for color when push in a direction was the choice for character yes that is a very good point like you knew there was a better option you didn't cycle characters on the screen and make us click you consistency right. in ui design in 1983 and consistency in user experience was not a thing and it shows here um games yeah. that did it did it by accident or did it because someone was way ahead of their time right um yeah so anyway so you get through that and then they drop you off at the colony which takes a thousand years mm -hmm. like it's this animation it takes a really long time and then and then you do a land grant and the way that works is there's a box that scrolls through every square on the screen mm -hmm. and whoever hits the button first gets the land. Right. And there's there's three different types of land kind of with different Oh, you got the mountain wampus. So I'll pause here for you to just take it in and enjoy. Oh my god, yeah. The elusive mountain wampus. Boy, I tried I tried and tried to get that wampus, but I just <laughs> could never never make it happen. He's a finicky uh, wumpus. He's very difficult. 
right to catch. I'll, I'll pop it back 10 seconds and we'll kind of watch again. There's a little black dot that's going to appear. Now, when I used to play as a kid, I thought it was a graphic glitch. I didn't know it was somewhere I was supposed to head to. Mm -hmm. And you basically run onto the, the mountain with the little blinky light. Mm -hmm. That's him opening his door, his front door. Yep. And then and then you've caught him. And then he give, it tells you in the manual he gives you money. To but really, he doesn't give you that much. And, and well... So here we are not talking about what happens because I got so excited by the Wumpus. I know. But there's there's two ways to get money at the end of your turn. You can catch the Wumpus or you can go to the pub. Well, you get, and if you catch the Wumpus, you still get to go to the pub. True. So True. There's two ways. You can do both. Yeah. But but the amount of money you get at the pub depends on how much time you have left. So it's kind of no. like a balancing. Yes, it is. I, I'm telling you, I have ended it with very little time left and gotten 100 and I've ended it with a lot of time left and gotten 60. I trust the manual on that. I didn't even pay attention because I just trusted the manual, but that might be true. <laughs> I mean, I was just there like, might oh, more be time some here. time related thing in there, but I'll be damned if I can figure it out. Cause I, I read the manual and thought that too, but it's not my experience. Hmm. That is interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, allegedly, allegedly it translates to how much time. <laughs> But anyway, the Wumpus moves around and it's hard to catch. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, so you, you choose land the grab. land you want. The, the, the dashes in the middle are river. The little hills are hills and the yeah. flat parts are plains. Now, um, the river tricked me because I didn't realize that was a river. I thought it was a path. Yes. Yeah, it's a river. Until I read the manual and I'm like, oh, it's a river. I should yep. put food there. <laughs> like right. I was just you, putting food everywhere as a kid. I'm like... You food you get food. <laughs> yeah so really like the river squares are kind of important because there's only four of them mm -hmm. and, and if you put food on the river you get more food if you put energy on the plains you get more energy and if you put miners on the hills you get more smith ore right and those are really the three main resources until you get to tournament mode and then there's a fourth that's basically just money yeah um, and that's still part of mining so it's not right right so you do that, and then you you get your first square of land, then it becomes your turn. And then you get a, a mule from the mule store, and then you choose what you want to put on your land. You outfit your mule, and then, and then you're on a timer, and that relates to how much food you have. Mm -hmm. It's very complicated. And, like, you, really, you can get away with a food shortage in this game. Yes. Very easily. So that but that's if you one of the interesting food, it spoils. Right. So don't just put a bunch into farms in your 12 turn game and expect that you're going to go nuts. Yeah. It's it's so interesting. Um anyway, so you use Smithor the store uses Smithor to make mules. Mm -hmm. And energy is used by the mules to mine. Yes. So you you're balancing those three resources, and then you're and then you're trading them between turns, which is what's going on now. And then there's also a store that yes. you can always sell to just for kind of a shitty price. Right. So you can see how all those things play together to make a very complicated dynamic uh, game. Yeah. And like like you were pointing out, they all rest on each other. And this is what's really important. Having each of these elements alone and not leaning into each other would still make a complicated game because you'd still have a lot to balance. But having food affect your timer on how far you get the mules out, having smith or make more mules, having uh, energy be needed or the mules don't produce anything, food right. or anything else... I mean, the colony can, you need, you need to keep an eye on the colony to keep it from spiraling down the drain. While at mm -hmm. the same time, trying to push yourself above everyone else by taking advantages, you know, by creating a certain amount of shortages so other people have to hurt, but you don't want them to hurt too much. And right, that's just really well done. Um, it's quite, it's quite brilliant. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was, I was just continually struck 
by how how much you can do. Like you can you can hoard the Smith ore so they can't make mules. That was one of the things I saw that surprised me in the manual. They're like, if you really need to like, you know, mess with the rest of the team, rest of the colony, and you've got the money and the time, get a mule, take it outside, and let it go. Just mm-hmm. let it go. <laughs> then yep. people who come after you in the turn don't have as many mules to do things with. It's like, wow. Yep. What a great evil concept so here like i'm short on energy and other people have energy so they're going to want to sell i'm going to want to buy we're going to want to try and meet in the middle like you're you're smart here though because there's so much energy available the store has a lot the people have a lot it's not going to be expensive so like you're better served here by putting that money into some or putting your uh resources into something that's more scarce Mm mm-hmm and, and so you have to like keep that in your head all the time yep. when you're playing this. But energy also doesn't spoil, so it's kind of risky because there's nothing that stops them from just sitting on it, then turning those farms into something else for a couple turns. Right. And and then there's additional strategy involved with how you place your stuff. Like if you have two squares next to each other that are producing food, you get bonuses. And if mm-hmm. you have like I think it's three or something. If you have more squares that are producing one thing, then you get additional bonuses. But then at some point, your returns diminish. Right. And there's events that happen. So this is there's a lot going on in this game. Uh, and again, for 1983, it's super brilliant. If you can kind of get past the pokey interface that should be a board game. Right. And I think even in 1983... Like, seeing this as graphics wouldn't have excited me. Mm-hmm. Like, this isn't making me go, ooh, I need to play this game. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> Your experience sitting down to play this the first time is a little bit like, what the fuck am I looking at? Right. It It's not clear what anything is. Like, you really need the manual. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it can be... It can be challenging to get into... Uh, and maybe some other people had a different experience back then. Have you heard of this before now? Mule? Yeah. I, I had heard about it coming and going uh, a little bit. That was sort of my experience, too. Like, I knew the name when I first got it. Uh, Pirate it. But, um... <laughs> so disappointing. I've for it since then. Uh, when I first heard about it, I'd heard the name... But no one talked about it. None of my friends were like, you got to play Mule. You, you know, right. there's this drive for it. And I'm, I've am i always wondered why that is. Because it is, it's an amazing game. Um, mm-hmm. It really is. Yeah. Except for the timer. Like, that is the only, give me a button to cancel the timer when everything's done. Like, if all players press button, kill timer. Mm -hmm. huge the other thing like if if you see what just scrolled by on the screen there's these random events and they what they need to do you can cancel them but they need to put the the effect of the event first and then what the event was Mm -hmm. you got fifty dollars for finding a dead rat not you find a A dead rat from your home world took pity on you and sent $75. Okay, we're there. <laughs> okay. Come back, Matt. Come back. We're here. Come on. <laughs> it should be you got $75 from your home because then you could skip it. Well, like one of them was your off-world stocks uh, mature and you get 100 bucks. And my wife literally in the middle of getting that message was like, why am I off world? I'm like, you're not off world. It's off world stocks. But why am I off world? She just lost track of what was happening because it was taking so long to scroll by. And she's like, I didn't even notice a message was happening. Now there's a message. Right. Yeah. She, I think she likes the game, but she's going to want to play a couple times before she can get over some of its shortcomings. Yeah. And it's the, mostly a time thing. It doesn't respect your time. Yeah, it's it's really 
pokey. Uh, it, and there, there's like a some kind of like reflex elements and timing elements mm -hmm. that that make it a little more gamey than just pure board game. Yeah. And really, those are kind of my least favorite parts. Like trying to push that byline before someone else gets there like that can be annoying especially again when you're playing with the computer it can be annoying i kind of like it um i think it would be more interesting with more players i think that would definitely be more interesting um do you know if the races move at different speeds or do they, they always don't move at the i same i that was what i was hoping the races would do differently because that would be really interesting but yeah no. some sell faster some buy faster right some that, just that move the line cool. faster in general something something to help differentiate those races a little bit would have been cool. Yeah. Um, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, but when you do these, like there's three resources and, and you auction two of them or do you auction all three? Yeah, you don't you don't auction Smith or. Not really. No one's buying you Smith just, or. You just sell it price. to the store. Yeah. Uh, but to sit through these auctions over and over again, I mean, that tired. said, if I was playing in a more tournamenty edition and I didn't want people to make mules, I might buy Smithor at a higher price. In that's true. That's true. That's yeah. That's a good point. So it's possible, but I, in practice, never happens. Yeah, you'd have to have a very specific situation for that to be a strategy. It's not impossible. It's just unlikely. Yeah, um, but it's it's good and it's like a it's it's like economics for kids. Yeah, because you learn about supply and demand, and you and then there's like the store, mm -hmm. uh, which is you know kind of always there, but except when it's not. And then like then you're like, oh, I get what it means to have a market cornered and have a monopoly on a resource. Like it's quite lucrative. Yes. If you like games like Agricola or Catan, you check this out. Yeah. Uh, Catan just made me think, when I was going to say Catan, one of the things I think would be interesting in this sort of game for them to add and improve would be like, with Catan, you can get Longest Road or mm -hmm. other things like that that earn points. Like, I would love to see, you know... River Valley, you own all four of the river tiles. Or, yeah. you know, uh, Corner Market, you get all four corners of the map. Or, you know, something like that where you get bonuses for doing interesting things with your land purchases. Right. Right. And, and there's also land auctions, too. So, like, that, it would play into that really nicely yeah. because you'd be like, oh, I need that corner and it's up for auction. And everyone would know and you'd, like, have to... Yeah, you're going to pay for more. it because you're going for yep. that, that uh, bonus. So... Yep. Yeah, I could see this game being really interesting. I'd also wouldn't mind... Um, one of the things Catan and those kind of games do too is it's not a number of turns. Number of turns is an interesting mechanic because it puts a nice hard cap. Mm -hmm. But it could also be interesting to take the turns off. And I know I said earlier that six is the perfect number of things for this, but if we're spitballing and dreaming of a perfect mule, uh, some people might be like, nah, we're going to sit down, we're going to do this all night. Turn mm -hmm. off the term limit and set a goal. First person to a million dollars. First person to like 20 plots of land. First person to 100 Smith or, or some goal that that's yeah. the victory condition. Yeah, that would be fun. That'd be fun. It'd be if, fun if to have you some had all night. on this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you'd have some people who know how to rush it. Like they just right. get to that condition. It would it'd create different style it'd create different strategies of playing the game by setting different victory conditions without changing the game's nature at all and i think that would right. help really add some replayability and interest to the game yeah yeah I, I think it it's probably maybe one of the reasons you didn't hear about it too this seems like more geared for a little older people well so, like yeah go on sorry well, I, I, I just, I can't picture playing this and being 
12 or 10. Maybe not 10. What I was going to say yeah, is... Yeah, 12 the, I think I could do. 12 I think I could do. Here was what I was going to say. Like, I could see playing when I was 12. I could maybe even say when I was 14. But shortly after that, the other strategy games are going to start drawing my attention. I'm going to want to play, you know, those SSI strategy games. Or I'm going to want to play mm -hmm. something with a little more teeth behind it. Because this is going to feel, with the bright colors and the things, it doesn't... With the white background on the bright colors, it has this childish thing, mm -hmm. aspect to it, that might turn off as you start to get to that 16, 17, 18, and you want a little more edge on your stuff. Yeah. This doesn't have that edge. This has a sense of humor that always creates the same amount of snicker out of me. I can see the joke once or a hundred times and I'm always going to go, hey. and that's it. It's a yep. pleasant, hey. <laughs> right. But that's all it's going to get. <laughs> 100%. That, 100%. That nails exactly like the the tone of this game. Right. It's lighthearted and yeah. The bird gets an extra $400 as its nest egg. <laughs> like, <Yeah. you> know, <laughs> like I get it. I see yeah. what you did there. That's cute. Yeah. And I'll see it again and I'm like, yeah, it's still cute. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'm not sick of it. I'm not giving it anything else. <laughs> True. I will say to the the song, the mule song at the beginning, fantastic. Yes. I love the mule song. It's yeah. Gus. I forgot the guy who wrote the music. It's Gus something. I'd Good job, Gus. Yeah. Something. It's on the it's on the home screen. It's on the home screen. Um, Quiet. Yeah, I, I all the developers on this did a really good job. The games, you know, the timer needs some work, but I think for 1983 I can overlook that user experience issue i'd love to see this i wouldn't want anyone to try and remake this you won't yeah you're not going to capture the magic that is this. it's kind of like trying to recapture xcom you're going to have to catch the spirit of it and then break literally everything else mm-hmm like, if you want to know why the Firaxis XCOM worked, it's because it managed to catch the emotions you got from playing XCOM without recreating XCOM. Yeah, I, I think I think the, the, you know, the next version of Mule is really just Vice with the network play. Like, that's all you really need. I, I don't think you need to remake this. I, I think it's fun I mean, as it is. If you wanted to make a Mule game, if you want it, if you're like, I like this, I'd like to up the graphics. I'd like to modernize the user experience. I'd like to fix the timer button. Um, you can't call it mule. Mm -hmm. And you can't be too um, beholden to the mule or the aliens or anything else. Like if you call this fantasy colony and you did it with elves and dwarves and stuff like that where they had to build a little fertile valley colony and get that going it could work but you'd have to change a bunch of stuff it'd have to be inspired by but not beholden to this game totally mule is its own thing mule is its own thing it's a beautiful thing even with its flaws uh what's your pinnacle and pit there matt my pinnacle was the first time uh, that I had all the res the only one with the surplus, and the store had nothing. And I watched all three of those people like coming up, <laughs> and, I, and I just sat there and let them come and come and come, and it felt really good. I was like, I'm doing this. Like I I doubled down in. on energy. <laughs> I was like, I'm just gonna buy food. Everyone's got the river plots. I'm just gonna double down on energy and hope for the best. And then some events happened, and it was it like went in my favor. And I was like, yes. The pit was probably. I had a few times where my mule wandered off when I felt like it shouldn't because I didn't click it quite right. And it happened like three times in a row when I first started, mm -hmm. and that was really frustrating. 
and also missing the wumpus so many times. I wanted to hunt that wumpus because it's such a great nod to hunt the wumpus. I love mm -hmm. it. But I just I love couldn't all catch references. <laughs> yep. And the manual's like, well, maybe wumpus hunting just isn't for you, loser. Right. <laughs> Damn it, you <laughs> asshole. Yeah. Maybe it's not, though. <laughs> what about you? Uh, my pinnacle was uh, playing with my wife. First time I ever played this with someone else. So that was just a great experience. Uh, my pit was playing with my wife. Because... <laughs> <laughs> Like halfway through, I'm like, we can stop. She's like, nope, we're doing this. I'm like, yep. you're not having fun. <laughs> yep. She's like, it's the timer. It's just the timer. It just kills me. I'm like, the modern gamer is not as patient as the 1980s gamer because you said the load time on this. That's is what quite I was about high. to say. Like, like you're, you're primed to like, okay, this is a game where I'm gonna wait a lot. Yeah, I was going to say, the timer probably didn't feel as bad back then, because it took like three minutes to load the game. Like, the timer is fast, comparatively. It's all about what you're standing next to when you're comparing things like the right. timer. Yeah. But, yeah. It, and, and there's another thing, too. If you want the timers to go faster, you want less food. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, no, the timers don't affect the store buying, and that's the thing that's really your your timer issue yeah yeah your mule placement timer mm -hmm. that's rough yeah yeah just watching the stores no one's moving in the store the timer's just ticking down no mm -hmm. one has anything to sell no one wants to buy anything we're just standing yep. around yep yep so uh my other my real pit though is when you start to load up the screen and you want to get into the game and you want to get going, like none of the stuff will get you to the start playing the game screen. And if you hit F1, it starts it all over again. <laughs> I've had that happen several times. And again, the load time is no joke. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. Worth worth playing with a friend, definitely. Worth playing with a friend. Worth checking out alone. Uh Yeah. I would play this. See what I it's about. Someone. Yeah. I have played this before over the years, and I will probably play it again. Yeah, um, it's a good time. Yeah. So. All right. What's next? What's our next? Well, uh, adventure? our long game, as we've already mentioned once, XCOM for our fifth anniversary. Five year. Yep. So, first game we ever played. First game we ever played. We talked for like an hour and a half on it the first time, so I'm going to be interested whether we go over or under that this time <laughs> yeah me too i think it'll be good um like i've already learned you know i've been playing this for how many years finally decided to try laser pistols those things are yeah. awesome yeah I it's a good early plasma. game right so we will talk about it at length we will talk about it at length we don't necessarily need to get into that are you ready for the short game matt i don't I know am. if you know this one or remember this one it's an Apogee title. Okay. I'm familiar with Apogee. Death Rally. Okay. Sure. So the original version is free on Steam if you're into that. There is a modernized version that I'll probably check out to compare and contrast. Um, Cars with Guns. Every one of those videos has gone well for us. <laughs> <laughs> right they are polarizing the, the cars with guns games cars with seem guns to be games. quite polarizing yeah we either love them or hate them uh well yeah i mean interstate 76 we love but it didn't work for us so what you gonna do yeah um this week we should be doing our long nox archaeus stream oh yeah get that done What's coming up that's coming up uh, I think that's still in plan. I have a lot going on at work, so we might have to move it. But I think it will be fine. I think we can do that. Watch um, this space. Watch this space. To be decided. And I yeah. think that's everything else. So thank you, everybody. We'll talk to you in a week or so. Bye. All right, bye.
Big thank you to all of you watching, sharing, liking, subscribing, suggesting games, commenting on our videos, or supporting us on Patreon. We appreciate all of your support and look forward to sharing many more videos with you. Thank you again.